back to order the recessed health committee meeting from earlier this morning. First, we have roll call. Fred Lecoq. Aye. Janelle Fulbright. Yule Anglin. Here. Bill John Baker. Jack Baker. Here. Carly Buzzer. Here. Julia Coates. Here. Bill Crittenden. Here. Jody Fishenhop. Here. Meredith Fraley. Here. Tom Garvin. Here. Tana Gloria Jordan. Present. Curtis Snell. Here. Chris Coates. Here. David Thornton. Here. Kara Watts. Aye. Um, we are currently in the middle of report number three, Cherokee Nation Health Services, Melissa Gower, and oh, um, just to housekeeping, um, yes. before she starts, I make a motion that we place uh, Chuck Hoskins Jr. on this committee as a member. Any discussion on that, Council? No, I just, given the gravity of what we're going to consider, that uh, I will certainly accept it. We have a motion and a second to uh, add Councilor Hoskin to the Health Committee. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Are there any opposed? Motion passes. Um, when we ended. Next on my list was Councilor Fishing Hawk. Okay. What am I asking about the ro robotic machine? You said roughly 500 pounds. Can I ask you how much they say that our clinics will be doing someone? And I don't know that. Can you get it back to me? Mm -hmm. Okay. The other thing, you said we're thinking about putting one at Roma Peace? Mm -hmm. Okay. Within the next year or so? Um, yeah, I mean, we, we're, plan. we're planning on it. We've just got to do a little renovation to make room for it. Okay. I asked a, a question about one of my asked last month. I was wanting the positions available at Wilmington and all the other clinics. How many positions were budgeted at Wilma P and how many are vacant? And then I wanted a breakdown of the positions budgeted by clinics and the vacancies at each clinic. Okay. Not just one with and I'm not just saying uh, physicians okay. or, you know, I said, all um, positions, all positions. Okay. Okay. Your, the response to that is that your budget book has all the budgeted positions in it, and I did send you a list of the vacancies by clinic. I didn't get the list of vacancies. And our budget book does have it, but when you start turning to the back side of the budget book, it'll say 25% out of here, and then you turn to another page, it'll be 15% out of here. So I would like it all gathered in need order so I can just look at it. And the next question I have is about Medicare and Medicaid payment on contract health, because I know I've sent you two or three questions about contract health people. How, how do we deny everybody, regardless of whether there's center care or somebody will pay for it, and then they appeal? Well, first of all, we deny based on medical priority, okay? So if someone goes through the contract health referral process, the approval, there's two, there's, there's two issues. One is medical priority and then there's funding. So we base, it, we base it on medical priority. So if someone is in the categories that are automatically approved, then we approve those and those go through regardless of what payer source or if they have a payer source. And then um, if they're not in those categories, um, then they're denied. Um, and that's why I always say if somebody's denied, they should appeal it because if they do have a payer source, um, lots of times we can work with those vendors to get them to do it for their, their uh, like if they have Medicare, um, a lot of our vendors will do it at the Medicare rate. So we can negotiate that with them, and they should appeal that process. So they but we don't we don't deny people based on whether they can pay for something or not. We deny it based on medical priority. So when they call me, the first thing I need to do is tell them to file your appeal. File Absolutely. Your okay. And if they need assistance, have them to go to the clinic where they go to, and the CHS folks there can assist them. Okay. Councilor, uh, Madam Speaker Fraley, I had you. Um, during the conversation before we recessed, you had raised your hand, and I didn't know if it was 
for the motion that you had or That's you actually okay okay when I rudely interrupted. I'm sorry when I rudely interrupted no, no, no. I was going to I just wanna make sure you had the opportunity. Are there any more questions for Melissa Gallup, please? Thank you, Melissa. We are and I also brought your original charts back to you that you requested. Next on the agenda is old business. It appears there is none. Um, item number one is a resolution uh, proclaiming the month of September as Alcohol and Drug Recovery Month within the Cherokee Nation. I believe... Councillor Fulbright had taken the lead on that, but I don't see her here, so I will get back to that real quick if I can find it. Uh, um, essentially, this is a, um, it's a beneficial to the Cherokee Nation to bring awareness to drug and addiction recovery methods and to promote all efforts to increase drug and alcohol sobriety and to prevent yeah. drug and alcohol abuse. Yeah. Uh, it's simply a uh, declaration of, of the month of September is uh, to recognize uh, those addictions and recovery uh, methods. I move for its approval. We have, second. A, we have a first and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, any opposed? The motion carries. Next is item two. Move to approve. Second. Um, on item two, the resolution ratifying self-governance compact of the United States of America, Health and Human Services, Indian Health Service. We have a first and a second. Is there any discussion? Uh, Councilor Hoska, I believe, Mr. Hember, did you have a statement before Councilor Hoska? Well, one thing that I would uh, want to bring in, uh, to the attention of the council is uh, I would recommend an amendment on the, in the uh, resolve clause. As you are aware, or as, as you can remember, uh, part of the argument of whether this needed to come back to the council for approval prior to the attorney general's opinion is that the council had approved such uh, compact or this compact uh, in uh, oh, March of 2006. Uh, in order to avoid that type of interpretation uh, in the future, um, if you look at the uh, resolve clause, it states that the Council of the Cherokee Nation hereby ratifies the compact of self-government <coughs> entered into on March 6, 2006 for Indian Health Service <laughs> Program service functions and activities including <coughs> WW Indian Hospital and including all attachment to such compact as they are negotiated from time to time. Uh, I would recommend a period after W.W. W. Hastings Hospital and strike the remainder of that uh, for the reason that one could interpret uh, the remainder of that sentence to be a prospective blanket approval of any uh, future amendments or compacts to the self-governance document. That's, would be, that would be my recommendation as a, a council. Councilor Hoskin, you have the floor. Uh, I'd offer uh, Mr. Hembry suggested as a friendly amendment to the uh, sponsors. Uh, I would want to hear from Melanie Knight, Secretary of State, or Chief Smith before accepting anything like that. Secretary. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I just wanted to explain what the effect of that uh, amendment would do. Um, Clearly, the act that uh, we've been talking about that requires ratification of compacts, including this compact, tobacco compacts, other types of compacts, <coughs> intergovernmental compacts, requires their rat ratification. What the way a self-governance compact works is that there's a compact, which is included in your attachments here, but there's also funding agreements, and funding agreements are attachments to a compact, a compact being a a overall umbrella document that does not have an expiration date and extends for the life of our, our involvement in self-governance. It was renegotiated in 2006. The funding agreements are attachments to that compact that outline the annual funding and programs that are being compacted under that arrangement. And to take that phrase out, um, implies to me, I don't know that it says it, but it implies to me that 
uh, we would need to bring each attachment in the future, uh, which is a funding agreement, separately for ratification to the council, even though it's not a new compact. And so if that is what is intended by that strike here, then I don't think, at least I don't agree with that because it's not a compact. An attachment is not a compact. An attachment is an attachment to a compact. So we agree that compacts need ratification, but separate attachments shouldn't be separately ratified. Right. The, the council actually sees the substance of the annual funding agreement each year with the budget. So the substance of the annual funding agreement is part of the annual budget. So you, you ultimately see that agreement or the substance of that agreement. Mr. Chair, I also wanted to add that um, the funding agreements are routinely amended and they're amended many times throughout the year, up to 20 times in, a, in, a fis in one fiscal year. And so um, those funding agreements are amended for increases in congressional funding. They're amended when we get new funding for CHS, for different kinds of programs that come down. And I, I don't believe um, that the intention here is to come back each time there's an amendment to that funding agreement and get ratification from council for those. Mr. Hambrick. Well, the reason for the, the uh, language uh, in striking that or um, uh, if we need to modify it to modify it was um, uh, uh, the takeover of WW Hastings Hospital was, was treated as a a mere funding agreement for the, of the self-governance conflict. Uh, uh, and and that's, that's what was argued before this council, before the Attorney General you know, rendered it, its opinion. Uh, I, I don't think I'll be doing my clients a service if, if I uh, uh, didn't come forward and say that if one could interpret that this be a prospective uh, uh, blanket approval for any future takeovers of any other uh, self-governance proceedings, uh, uh, self-governance uh, uh, program uh, and, and uh, if we need to work on that language let's work on it but uh, I guess what I, what I would ask of, of, of the Chief and Melanie, uh, let's take a, uh, any other IHS hospital, uh, if we pass it with, with that language in there or, or, or are you going to come back and, and get council approval or is that just going to be a, a, a simple amendment to the self-governance program compact? But I mean, that, that's, I want to make sure to abide by the spirit of Legislative Act 1501 that says any compact needs to be approved by this council. And anything that has a language that might be a blanket prospective approval, I, I, I just, you know, I, I want to act in abundance of caution. Councilor Cowan, why do you still have the floor? Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, with all due respect, I don't read it the same way, so I won't be accepting it as a friendly amendment, but I'm sure you'll offer it as a motion to be voted on. I'm sure I will. Um, do I have the floor, Mr. You do now. Yes, sir. Um, I agree with Mr. Hembry. I mean, clearly what was at issue a couple of months ago was whether Legislative Act 1501 required the administration to come to this body to get uh, the compact ratified. Uh, we were at odds, I think, the administration and, and, the, and the council over what that issue was. The attorney general resolved that issue in favor of the council's uh, views of it. Uh, and if we do anything short of not ratifying it limited to the specific issue, I mean, everyone knows the specific issue is Hastings. And that if that's embodied in the funding agreement, then we can't, I think, uh, I think I think we have to follow Mr. Hembry's recommendation and uh, and strike the language as he suggested. Uh, so with that said, I guess I would move to make that amendment. I understand the friendly amendment's been rejected, so I'd make that motion. And Mr. Hembry may need to restate that for us. Mr. Hembry, second that. We have, a, we have a first and second. Would you state that, please, again? The amendment would be to put a period after W. W. Hastings Indian Hospital and strike the remainder of the sentence. Now if there's anything, uh, uh, any compromise language I would look for that too. 
Councilor Hosman, you saw it before. And Mr. Henry, is there a danger in, in the word including before W.W. W. Hastings? Are we saying, you know, does that mean including but not limited to? And is that going to open and wide open for the administration to tack on other uh, uh, other uh, other plans in the future because it says including W.W. W. Hastings? That, that I don't have a, a problem with, with, with that language because the language in and of itself is broad. It says uh, that the Council of the Cherokee Nation hereby ratifies the compact of self-governance entered into on March 6, 2006 for Indian Health Service program service functions and activities including W.W. W. Hastings Hospital. Um, I, I, don't see a, I don't see a problem with, with that language. And then just to follow up, just direct your attention to paragraphs 6 and 7, two whereas is. I, I mentioned this at our last uh, our meeting a few weeks back. I mean, th those strike me as, as extraneous. They, they aren't, I don't think, the underlying legal authority for the council to be ratifying this agreement. I think the Attorney General made that clear. So my, my feeling is we ought to strike those uh, two paragraphs, uh, replace uh, 6 and 7 with what is really paragraph 10, which references uh, Legislative Act 15-01, and uh, revise paragraph 8 such that it reads, uh, pursuant to these authorizations, uh, and, and strike that and, and replace it with pursuant to Legislative Act 15-01. I, mean, I, guess, I guess the essence of it is state the only legal authority that is at issue here, and that is Legislative Act 15-01. Don't bother mentioning the uh, other two resolutions. What's your feelings on that? Oh, to be honest, I really don't care what's in whereas clauses. You know, uh, they're, 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 they're not uh, enacting uh, uh, clauses of a resolution. It's to, you know, th it was part of the discussion that we had, so therefore <coughs> I don't have a major objection to it, whatever the will of the council is. I mean, what's important about a resolution from the council is the, is the, ro the resolve clause or the therefore clause. So uh, th that's where I would direct my attention. Well, I, I, I don't make that motion. Uh, Mr. Hembry, I've got a question, not being an attorney. Uh, what does the Attorney General's opinion, how broadly does that apply? Because that, that's ultimately not, not being of a legal mind. I'm looking at the last part of this that you're suggesting that's stricken. How far does the Attorney General's opinion go as far as what the Council has to ratify? Is it just this specific case? Is it, I mean, it, well, I, I probably should have brought a copy of it with me, but if, if, you know, unfortunately, I don't. I think the attorney general, the attorney general's opinion, and correct me if I'm wrong, uh, said that we had to ratify the compact, uh, the self governance compact. Is that that's correct? Which we are yeah. not in disagreement over. Yeah, yeah, you know, and so therefore, this resolution is ratifying that 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 2006 self governance compact. All right. Um, like I said, the prior argument was that we already did that in 2006 so we could take over Hastings without council approval. And defending the council's position and their legal rights of future counties, uh, I do not think that it is prudent to have language that one could say, well, back in you know, 2008, you all said in any other uh, uh, attachments to such compact as may be negotiated from time to time. We don't know what those attachments are going to be. <coughs> now, if we can limit it to funding attachments, I, I don't think that there would be a problem on, on, on that. Yeah. Sure. Sure. Oh, okay. Well, then I will respectfully yield the floor. Secretary of State. I'd recommend that we leave something like the language that's in there in the in the act of whereas that attachments to the compact are being included in their ratification. But what we could say is that uh, provided that any new programs, services, functions, and activities negotiated under those attachments have to come back for new uh, ratification by the council. I think that would address the concerns that we have that routine amendments, which are done very frequently, um, uh, in which you all approve in a budget modification, wouldn't have to come back each time, and, and they number in the t about 20 some a year. Um, and that probably would satisfy what you're trying to accomplish here, that any new programs, uh, no matter how small they are, would have to come back 
uh, for new ratification by the council. Councilman Hoskin, I believe this is your amendment, so you're going to have to. Okay, well, two things. One is I'm going to lean on Mr. Hembry's advice, and number two, I don't have the precise wording that the Secretary had in mind, but it sounds good. But let me ask Mr. Hembry to, to weigh in on it. If, I, if we could go into a state of pregnated pause here, I'm working on language. And, and I, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to also address the, the um, comment about the uh, two whereases that state the legislative history. Um, that's the reason that they are in the resolution is because they are part of the legislative history of the self-governance compact. And they did indeed authorize the chief to negotiate and execute a funding agreement. And so that is the reason that they're in here. They're not extraneous um, to the action, but they state what the legislative history is, which also includes the act that requires ratification, I believe. But um, they did authorize the chief to negotiate. Is it required in order to do the ratification to have that legislative history in here? No, I would agree with that statement as well. So. During the pause, Council Hoss, can you still have the floor? Uh, I, I don't have any response to that. I think that ship has sailed. But, uh, um, I'm just here. Madam Speaker. <laughs> I have a question for Mr. Hoskin. <clears throat> Are you trying to, is your objective to make it more specific rather than so broad? Well, with respect to the whereas issues, I, my, my concern was we be as precise and as limited as possible as to what is even the legal basis for us ratifying, and it seemed to me that the Attorney General was pretty clear that the only legal basis for us to ratify and the only legal authority that mattered was Legislative Act 15-01. So I thought, why does the why do those prior resolutions even need to be in here? I understand whereas clauses are, are essentially throwaway lines, for lack of a better phrase, but you know we could throw all sorts of things in here that are probably not necessary and should. So. Mr. Henry, I know you have a whole semester <coughs> study for tests in law school, but how are we doing over here? We're doing very well. Okay. Um, this, and it may need some tweaking, but, but uh, this is what uh, we've, we've worked on right here during our pregnant pause that now will give birth to this idea. Uh, be it resolved by the Cherokee Nation that the Council of the Cherokee Nation hereby ratifies the compact of self-governance entered into on March 6, 2006 for Indian Health Service programs, services, functions, and activities, including W.W. Hastings, and including all routine funding attachments to such compact as they are negotiated from time to time, provided that any new or additional programs that may be assumed shall require council approval. Councilor Hoskins, does that meet your? It, it does. I, I agree with that. I looked at my second too. Councilor Callan Watts, it's your uh, motion to. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Point of order. It was Please. my motion, and I had a second. You did have agree. a second here. I but think David Wilson Payne. Yeah. It's, it's it's now it's Councilor Callan Watts. Since she has the original sure. first to accept or yeah. decline. If she accepts it as a friendly amendment, it's automatically made part of, and then you vote on it. I'll accept it. In my second? I'll accept it. Friendly amendment's been accepted. Um, we're still in discussion, correct? <laughs> I just had one more point. Um, let me, uh, I've got several lists of councilors. Um, Councilman Crittenden, you're actually next. I am. Well, I, didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know that I raised my hand, but I guess <laughs> it's a senior woman. I it was a while back, Karen. 
I guess the question I had was this on this funding agreement. Have you got a signed copy of this from the uh, Secretary of Health and Human Services? On the funding agreement? Yeah. No, no, it's been submitted. You normally get those, though. Uh, oh, yeah. Okay, well, because this one in the book's not signed. Right. The compact is signed, but the funding agreement is not signed. Councilor Fishing Hawk. Councilor Coates. It's moved. <laughs> Councilor Cowan Watts. Wait long enough. Can I call for a question yet? No, you have no. the floor. What would you like to do? I'd like to call for questions. It's been called for question. What about all of us who want to discuss it? That's a good point. Um, point of order, do we have to vote to cut off debate at this point since others others want to discuss? And we I've got vote. three more counselors. I'm going to allow the rest of the discussion. Councilor Thornton. Yes, sir. <clears throat> That's correct. Todd? Yeah. Mr. Cameron? Yes. I just got to get one thing kind of clear here. Uh, being that the Indian Health Service program, services, functions, and activities, says it's including W.W. W. Hastings Hospital. Will this W.W. W. Hastings Hospital budget and compacts come before the council every year during the budget? Well, yeah, it will be part of the comprehensive okay. budget. That we would have to approve room. that in, yeah. in the yearly budget. Yes. Yeah, this, this is a, um, a, uh, uh, this becomes a component of our comprehensive budget, and it has been submitted in the 09 budget. Is that, you know, that, that is correct. And, you know, part of the constitutional, you know, duty of the council is to review that budget, make its amendments, and pass one. More or less have to to keep up with the Constitution. Yep. Thank you. Councilor Hoskin. I withdraw. Do we have any more questions? Councilor Jordan. Well, as, as all of you all know, we uh, amended the, the uh, agenda today and put an item on it, number three, and I had sent out a copy of that act which that act goes a little further than this resolution in that it talked about our clinics. And during that time, and I want to I, I wanna ask the chief, Chief Smith, uh, I think you had a discussion this morning with Todd and there was some change in the wording, is that correct? Yes. Essentially, as this act is written now and the copies that have been provided to me, are you, uh, of mind that this is something point that... Order. Count, Council, point of order. Councilman, can I ask, are we talking about item three? Well, it we... goes to the vote on item two. Yeah. Finish the question. The act in its present form that Todd prepared during our break, that you and he had worked out the wording, is this a compromise that you feel admin can live with? Well, I, I haven't seen the last language, but it's, it's, the, it's the exact language. Well, but I, I, I trust that he uh, yeah. took our comments. They're actually—it's not really. A, I, I don't know that I agree with your idea about a, about a compromise. The current resolution ratifies that compact. That stands by itself. What you propose, which we have no objection to, but I can't speak for the council as evidenced by last night's vote, is that it goes beyond the scope of the, <laughs> goes beyond the scope of the, the compact in that it actually, while we have no objection to it, it actually memorializes to some degree our overall health long-term plan and the need for us to comprehensively look at a long-term capital budget. And the last thing that we talked about, and we talked a little bit about this morning, was that we would have interpose no objections to continuance of IPAs as long as there wasn't a disciplinary issue. So in that uh, we have no objection to your proposed act, that's true, but I, I see that as separate, independent, and more exclusive and encompassing than the resolution before you. And, and we had a part here, Chief, that <coughs> included the hospital, so we would probably, if we, if this act, or if this resolution passes, I would assume we would want to delete that from this act because it would already be in the resolution that it passed. 
I would I think uh, your council would agree that it would be repetitive. Okay. Thank you. We have a motion, a first and a second on the original. And um, no more comments. We're going to call the question. Uh, the question, I'm sorry. I have a whole bunch of questions. <laughs> okay. Is that a, are you calling the question? I, I, the question has been called. I, I asked for more. These are pretty important, I think. I asked for more. I, I asked for more discussion. If you would like the floor, you have it. Madam Speaker. Parliamentary procedures. The question has been called. Now, a, that usually ends de de to debate by acclamation. That's after the council has been done. However, it is a motion that is not debatable, not amendable, and does can go to a vote, provided that the pit chair, you know, allows for it. And a, you, a yes vote would be to cut off debate and go directly to a vote. A no vote would be to continue on with with, with discussion. So, the question is that a majority I vote. That is a question for Mr. Henry. There's also another uh, part of that that says the chair's answer can be challenged by any member of the chair. Sure, it's appeal to decision of the chair. I will just Do withdraw you? my call for question. I just assumed we'd had enough debate, so. I don't think we're in any hurry, are we? I mean, is there a timeline or something that we need to be rushed about? I did think I'm we had to pass it today, but I may have misunderstood yeah. that. I need to go at 3 o'clock, so. <laughs> Madam Speaker, you have the floor. Thank you. 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 If the vote is to, for me on the go, if the vote is to uh, Hastings, uh, <clears throat> then I do have several questions, uh, and that is the question that's been presented. From some discussion this morning, um, mine centers around planning. From the discussion this morning, the pattern seems to be that <clears throat> the more money there is for health care, the more patients that we will have or should, should be able to care for, uh, <clears throat> with the precipitous growth in health care costs. Have we sought the help or the advice of a health economist? And if so, what was their recommendation? We did, um, and Melissa can help me out here, but during the planning process, we uh, acquired the services of a PhD who does healthcare financing as part of his, he's also a CPA, but does healthcare oh, financing. Can you speak up? And repeat that. Thank you. Mr. Chairman. And uh, so he was along with us during the planning process from beginning to end and into negotiations because he's also very familiar with negotiations with Indian Health Service, which is also very helpful. Um, he's worked on hospitals in both Indian Health Service system and then also in the private sector. And um, all of that being very helpful to us in, in healthcare financing as well as identifying those resources at IHS that um, at times we didn't know where all the pockets of those resources were and IHS was not forthcoming always in identifying them for us. Um, so uh, those recommendations were made to us in terms of um, uh, being able to budget uh, appropriately for the facility as well as um, making projections for third party and other types of resources. Um, he's also going to assist us in doing the proposals for the contract uh, support services for the facility which were eligible although there isn't a lot of appropriations right now for contract support as you know um, but we're eligible for startup as well as the ongoing contract support costs and the types of moves we've identified as priorities for year one to free up space in the facility are specifically around some of the issues that you raised that by freeing up space from the storage there in the facility means you can provide more patient care, means you can get more billing, means you can provide more patient care. And so it is a very um, circular and interdependent kind of uh, arrangement. And those moves that we've identified for mammography, for surgery, for taking the storage out and so forth are targeted towards that. Where the lowest cost changes that we can make, the most immediate changes we can make that are going to generate more revenue and provide more patient care in the facility. 
So his recommendation is... So those were some of the recommendations that came not only from his angle, but also from all of the planning groups that we had with the, with the, um, the, uh, the people in the specialty areas like pharmacy and like surgery and so forth that made recommendations to us during the planning. Um, another, maybe this is a personnel issue, but how do we insulate the staff, the doctors, et cetera, from politics? For instance, um, an elderly lady comes to the hospital for care. Chad Smith comes to the hospital for care with the same ailment. How do we insulate the, and I'm not saying that you require that, but how do we insulate the doctors and the staff from that type of political um, structure? I think I asked Melissa to address well, that in terms of operations. I mean, <coughs> I mean, part of part of my part of my part of my answer to that is currently we operate a, a, a huge healthcare system right now. Okay, we have lots of doctors and lots of nurses and lots of health professionals in 14 counties. But not enough in Salina. <laughs> and that wasn't your question. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I think we do a good job of that now. And how we do that, and we would continue to do that at Hastings, and we've had these discussions, is first of all, I as the group leader, that's my responsibility to deal with the politics piece. And I try to do that, and I try to keep it away from any of my staff. Okay? Um, if, if, um, we have, we're a very sophisticated healthcare system. We have lots of policies, and you know, I can. We probably have too many, actually. I can show you books and books of policies and processes that's that's a that you know centered around accreditation and all those kinds of things. So we have those processes in place, and the staff follow those. Um, so. I guess in short, we would do it the same way we do now, is that we're a sophisticated health system and we don't operate on politics. We operate on what's best for our Cherokee people. It's politics as far as Cherokee people, <laughs> but um, I think we do a really good job of that now and I've never had, uh, as long as I've been in health, I've not had one employee to come and say, um, you know, you got to help me because the chief's trying to make me do something. They would tell me that because they would know I would go to him and tell him to stop, whether he would or not, I don't know. <laughs> I would go tell him that. Just the same as I do with you all, too. Um, so, I think it, that's my an, another thing in terms of health that's special, I think, is that the, the medical care piece, the medical side of the organization is separated from the administrative side of the organization, and then they also have a quality care a quality improvement council that oversees the quality of care and so for medical care it is really driven independently by the medical side as opposed to driven by administrative whims so yeah. to speak. So, yeah. uh, and what is the plan to overcome uh, the, the people I've talked to said probably it's a good idea for tribes to assume operation mm -hmm. possibility particularly from a large bureaucracy standpoint. Yeah. What is the plan to overcome the result of bureaucracy that overwhelms patients and uh, health care providers <clears throat> with excessive paperwork that confuses and frustrates people? And as an example, I took my little 83-year-old aunt to Jay to the dental clinic. There were three different forms that she had to complete and they all ask about the same questions uh, and to me that's excessive and a waste of time and, and expense. <coughs> how, how do we overcome that? Okay. Well, um, I think there's several things that we have planned to work on that's going to help some of those things. One of the problems in healthcare is that it, before any um, provider um, wants to provide care to you, they need to know about you. Mm -hmm. So they need to know if you have chronic illnesses, if you're taking medication, you know, all those things are going to affect how that uh, provider provides their care to you. It's going to have an impact on it. And so uh, currently, 
uh, and this is a really good point, and we've talked about this previously, but currently our healthcare, uh, the Cherokee Nation clinics, and only in the last two years have done this, maybe actually a year, is that we have, we've consolidated all of our databases. So if you go to Jay, when they pull you up, they see everything on you from anywhere you've been in our system, okay? Currently, Hastings is not in that database. So they have to ask for all that information because they don't have that information. It, when we consolidate databases with Hastings, we'll have one, one source of information for that. So um, because we'll be consolidated, so all of our clinics and Hastings will be consolidated. So when they put you in, they can bring up the most health summary, the most relevant up-to-date information on you. It'll help with duplication of tests. It will help with all these things. I mean, the real answer to your question is health information technology. Mm -hmm. And we have a plan for that. We've been working on it. Um, with the uh, providers, you know, we're uh, 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 implementing, beginning the implementation process for electronic health record, which is going to help with people not having to continue fill out forms and um, those processes. So we do have a health information technology. Matter of fact, Dr. Graham and I just spent an hour with uh, information <coughs> technology people about the plan and our current draft is 96 pages long. So we do have a health information technology process that is in place to help add to um, those confusion levels. Yeah, and will that plan include uh, it's a private facilities also. Okay, what we're doing with that is we are a partner in SmartNet. Mm -hmm. And y'all are probably familiar with that because I think it was on your rules committee just mm -hmm. maybe last month. Um, we are in um, a network um, in Cherokee County Health Services Council um, that has about seven different partners in it um, where we're uh, putting some limited health information uh, into this system so that, and the real purpose for it is, say I go to Salina Clinic and um, that Saturday um, night um, I had something wrong and had to be taken to the ER and they took me to, to uh, Tahlequah City ER because Hastings couldn't take me or whatever. Um, that morning, uh, Monday morning, when I go to Salina to tell my doctor I had to go to the ER, when they pull me up, they will automatically see that I was at TCH on Saturday. So they will know that I was there, they'll know what medications was prescribed, what tests were done, <coughs> so that I don't go into the doctor on Monday at Salina and the Salina docs think they need to do four more tests. Well, those have already been done, so they'll just get the results of those. So yes, we are working. The host state of Oklahoma, I'm on a two healthcare task force uh, at the state level, one that was uh, by the, appointed by the governor and one by Speaker Binge. And HIT is the foundation um, you know, for the future of healthcare. And so the host state of Oklahoma, we're trying to develop what's called a RIO, an information center um, for healthcare. Um, so that anywhere you could, would go in Oklahoma, we'd be able to, the provider would be able to access some of that information. That's wonderful. Now, do we have a, an independent health board, or is there a plan for an independent health board to assure quality assurance, uh, uh, professional we, standards, uh, whatever else they do? We have a, a quality council. Um, that um, is made up of about 20 different people that are um, health administrators, different kinds of um, uh, program directors um, <coughs> that meets once a, we meet once a quarter and we go through all of our uh, measurable outcomes in clinical care, in access to services. We have eight goals, our strategic plan, and we go through those because we report on those quarterly and um, ensure that, you know, ask questions. We do, we have our QI department that does uh, independent QI studies on various trends that we might see going on. But, I mean, I do that on a daily basis. 
We have peer review set up. We're, we're a very sophisticated health system. You should tell us more of those good things <laughs> in health committee. Uh, one more question. I, I realize we're in a hurry, but what is the plan or incentive to attract uh, top-notch doctors, nurses, uh, to rural Oklahoma? I asked Melanie last night, will we be more or less a general hospital? Will we be focused on being a specialty hospital? If so, how do we attract these top professionals to top Oklahoma? Okay. Well, I'm going to address it even broader than Tahlequah, Oklahoma, because I'm responsible for the whole 14 county area of Cherokee Nation. Well, rural Oklahoma. And so, um, I mean, first of all, let me say that, that all of our providers are top notch, the ones we currently have. We have a very uh, rigorous credentialing system that we credential all of our providers by. And Yes, we have some providers that don't make it through and we don't hire them. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think our credentialing system is even um, uh, more rigorous than Indian Health Service. If there's anything that's more rigorous than Indian Health Service, it's our credentialing um, privileging system. So we have that currently in place. So all of our physicians um, are either board certified uh, we have a few that are board eligible that are taking their boards, but most of them are board certified, and I think the same is true <coughs> at Hastings Hospital. All of their providers are very top-notch. So um, we have a, a, a full-time, um, actually she's part-time right now. I think I've said this before, October 1st she'll go full-time. That's going to be a, a health professional recruiter full-time. Um, has already, we have a recruitment plan that we've already started implementing, we've been implementing it for about a year, and so she's gonna, we're gonna be producing vacancy uh, percentages, retention percentages, I mean, that's gonna be part of her job is filling those. We've uh, connected with directed studies and education. We have a whole health track there that we're working to get people uh, in that track to help them you know, get their education paid for. We, she has learned and figured out the whole Indian Health Service um, loan repayment and scholarship program so we actually help people fill out their paperwork and and get that in so they can be eligible for those we've been very successful in getting people approved for loan repayment probably one of the most successful organizations and actually the number of people we've gotten on loan repayment so the, all those things are recruitment tools for us to get people to rural Oklahoma um, and then a big recruitment is that once you have that base, you know, we have 70-something providers, and I think Hastings has about 60 or 70 providers, and, um, you know, all of a sudden you've got 140 providers, and who knows other providers but them providers. <laughs> so um, they start working in a, in a system that, that, you know, is good and allowing them to, to, to uh, practice and do the things that, they need to do to care for a population, and, and they're one of our biggest uh, assets in recruitment. So um, I can go on and on, but you get the picture. Oh, you're doing good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, one thing, it's one thing to provide comprehensive health care, which is, which is your goal. To me, it's just important is how do we enhance the quality of health care, but I think maybe you answered that. We have uh, published standards and guidelines. Absolutely. And I can tell you just one, just another brief example. Um, you know, not to get me started on our healthcare system, but another brief example is you know we were one of the 14 pilot sites in the nation that got accepted as a pilot site in the Plan Care Initiative, which is um, a partnership with Indian Health Service and the Institute for Healthcare Improvement, which the Institute for Healthcare Improvement is a worldwide quality health organization. And so we're one of the 14 pilot sites in there, and we've done better than any of the other pilot sites. They've all done fairly well, but we're, we've done the best. And um, Dr. Cobb actually went with us to their world conference in December, and, and we were highlighted at the conference, you know, with. 5,000 people there and, and so we have the uh, Indian Health Service has or the federal government passed the Governmental Performance Results Act which is GIPRA and those are all quality outcome measures. We participate in that program. We do very well in that program 
Okay, yeah, uh, that was my next question. We do have measurable. Oh, now, yeah. Um, <laughs> Um. <laughs> Glory is gone, yeah. <laughs> and we have lots of measurable outcomes, and, and part of that's dictated not only by the government through GIFR because we get federal funding, but it's also because we're accredited through right. AAAHC or through JACO or through CAS or CARP, depending on which, which part of our healthcare system you're dealing with. Mm -hmm. So they have very strict guidelines on showing outcome measurements. So we have outcome measurements for lots of disease processes as well as uh, non-medical processes because we want to show improvement in all of our, whether it's a billing process or a healthcare delivery process. So we have outcome measures for all of, those, all of those kinds of things. And then we judge them against the national standards. We have a benchmark to see if we're above or below. Well, great. I have more, but I think they can be asked more privately. So, okay. And any time, you. you're welcome. Well, to we'll come over and thing. make an appointment <laughs> and, and Next we'll question. <laughs> now wait, I want to talk about it. And come over and we'll be glad to show you our reports, yeah, anything you want to see. I mean, we have VUCUs of, of quality issues that we work on all the time. Thanks for your time and all the work you've put into this. And I told Melanie once and you look really, really tired. So. <laughs> I hope I look better. Appreciate all that. <laughs> 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 Mr. Lyle, for a couple more. Go ahead. I'm sorry, Councilman Callum Watts, you had a. No, you already allowed for it. I was going to ask, cautiously asked to call the question. Councilman Hoskin, you have the floor. If you could. Yeah, I withdraw. Oh, and uh, last question. Councilman Fishing, you have a question for me? I was just going to tell you thank you for suspending the rules for a minute for common courtesy. So you are welcome. Okay. Are there any more questions? I believe we have a motion on the floor and a second. All those, and I believe we do have an amendment that's been accepted to that. All those in favor of uh, passing item two as amended, state so by saying aye. 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 Are there any opposed? Aye. 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 Roll call. Roll call, please. Don Garvin? Yes. Chuck Hoskin Jr.? Yes. Tana Glory Jordan? No. Curtis Snell? Yes. Chris So? Yes. David Thornton? Yes. Kara Callum Watt? Yes. Yule Anglin? Yes. Jack Baker? Yes. Harley Buzzard? Yes. Julia Coates? Yes. Bradley Cobb? Yes. Joe Crittenden? No. Jody Fishing Hop? No. Meredith Fraley? Yes. Janelle Fulbright? Yes. We have 13 yes and 3 no. Resolution passes. We're down to item 3. Um, and I believe we have a new. Yes. Uh, Councilor Jordan, this is your. And I, did you did everyone get a copy of the new? I a copy of the new amount of the new act. Can we get? To I've got her one. Um, okay. Here. Let's see, Don, did you get one? This is an act that 
I would like to sponsor before this honorable body. It has nothing to do with the assumption of the Hastings uh, Hospital area. What it has to do with is a plan for the future, a future direction of the health area within Cherokee Nation. It has basically taken the clinics that we have talked about off and on for the last 10 months and put it into one act with a plan for resolving at some point within this act at six months uh, to establish some sort of appropriate funding level for those clinics and then through a master capital improvement plan that would be adopted by us uh, to construct those clinics. It also includes a paragraph that covers the IPA agreements there at Hastings that Cherokee Nation agrees and I think this morning I think they even made the comment uh, I believe Melissa did that there had never y'all have never objected to the continuation of an IPA agreement and this just gives assurances to the 400 classified IPA folks up at Hastings Hospital that we will not object to their continuation as long as their evaluations are good and there's not a work performance reason for objecting. The clinics would include uh, a new medical clinic located at Tahlequah, Oklahoma, adjacent to W.W. Hastings Hospital. It would include the new medical clinic at J. Oklahoma. As I understand now, that clinic uh, has quite an involvement with mold and so we opted for a, a new medical clinic to go into our long-range plans. It also would include a long overdue dental clinic at Salina. And it would include the new medical clinic, which is already on the drawing board, at Vanita. We went through a lot of reconstruction of this particular act. We got the input of Chief Smith, and I think he's probably already had to leave today. That's why I asked him earlier to uh, uh, establish his position on this act. I believe this act shows not only what we want to do, but it, it gives guidance to our vision for the future. If you all remember about three weeks ago or two weeks ago, the chief uh, gave us kind of an outline of what he would like to do up at Hastings Hospital. And I think if there's any concern about Hastings Hospital operation, I think it comes from the lack of space, which was one of the things that we talked about this morning, and that a separation of the clinic from the hospital might solve a whole lot of problems that they're encountering because of that lack of space. I would ask and encourage each and every one of you all to find it in your heart to put this vision in writing. And for that reason, I'm submitting this in the form of a motion. But before I do the motion, I would ask, is, is there anyone else that would like to sponsor this act? Chairman, I'd sign on as a co-sponsor. Councilor Hoskin and Councilor Fishing Hawk. Councilor Fraley. I just want to talk when the second. I, I got to get them. Let's see. Fishing Hawk. Okay. Councilor Fraley. Would there be anyone else that would like to be a sponsor? I think this shows our vision of what we want to do in the future. Of course, this can be added to periodically. It doesn't have a timeline in it, and that's one thing that we've had a great number of discussions about. Uh, that timeline will come in the form of that comprehensive plan that will come back to you at a later date. I would put that in the form of a motion at this time. Second. We have a motion. We have a first and second. Councilor Callan Watts, uh, we're in discussion. You have the floor. Thank you. I I'm greatly encouraged that we're looking at additional health care facilities because I don't think we've met our 30 mile radius minimum across the 14 counties. I know my community <coughs> suffers a lot. I know it's not listed on here. And so the thing about it is. Uh, this was sprung on us today, which is contrary to, I know we, we've been trying to change that about doing last minute stuff and um, 
especially something that would include so much money uh, and it's not comprehensive for the whole 14 counties so all it's not that I don't support these facilities or the, the, the idea that we need a comprehensive plan but I understood that the administration was bringing forward a comprehensive plan that would include some kind of time frames and also budget numbers at our budget hearings that are coming up pretty soon. Um, so I just can't support this uh, legislation today. I think this is something that needs to come from a more comprehensive place. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Councilor Baker, you have <coughs> Yes, my one concern is uh, for item A, item one, new medical planning located in Telco, Oklahoma, adjacent to WWH Hospital. Suppose we find that an ideal site would not be adjacent, but somewhere else in town. Well, it's certainly open to amending. Are you wanting to? I would say just new medical clinic located in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Are you offering that as a friendly yes. amendment? Would Before you do that, I think Melissa Garrett, did you have a statement on that? Yeah, if, if I could just make a few statements. Um, could, could you do me a favor? Could you direct it to that that part of subsection A first about I the can. clinic, and, and then we'll. Get I can. Because I want to. They've got a. a well, my, my concern is this. One is that we have a capital improvement plan. The tribe does. We have a long-range health plan and a health facility master plan that I've provided to y'all previously. My concern is that if we're pulling some of those functions out and putting them in an act then what does that do to the whole plan okay for example um, there is a Jack Brown Center that we need desperately I mean it is it is it is just a desperate facility that we've got to do that's not on here does that mean that I that we can't do Jack Brown Center anymore um, I mean, I can go on and on, okay? And then my next question is, or concern, is if we say on number one, new medical clinic, well, you know, I think I explained that our whole purpose was to separate the inpatient from the outpatient. So if we do a study and we determine that the best use would be to actually build a new inpatient facility, and leave the current hospital as the outpatient, does this prohibit me from doing that? Next is J. Let's talk about J for a minute. I mean, I, we're going to build a new facility at J. It's in the plan. The problem with putting J in here, I see, is this says new medical clinic at J, and then it has some, you know, general time frames in it. We want to apply for a joint venture for J. We're going to do that. If I do that, I'm not going to have the financing plan in six months. Is that going to prohibit us? Is that going to make me just build a replacement facility for Jay and forego having new services to offer to the Cherokee people in Jay? Um, I mean, I can, you get my, my, my concern is I'm concerned about pulling out pieces and putting them in an act when we've got the overall plan. Now, if you want, you know, the, and I think I, we've talked about this and talked about it and you know I've recommended that we bring the plan over and you look at the whole plan budget time is a great time to do that and if you officially adopt that plan you know I think that's good and fine I just have real reservations about pulling pieces out and limiting our ability in health care facilities thank you Councilor Baker, you still on the floor, and I believe there's a okay. discussion yeah, about it. Amendment. Yes, I'll just put an amendment to strike adjacent to the WWE Hastings Hospital. Yeah, I would agree to that. I agree. And do you have anything else? No. Uh, Councilor Hoskin. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, uh, I don't read anything in this act that is of a limiting nature. Um, in other words, the list uh, doesn't mean that other plans that the administration has are uh, suddenly uh, you know, prohibited, because certainly if the council intended to prohibit certain clinics, we could, and we're not. 
Um, I think this strikes a good balance uh, between uh, allowing the administration a great deal of flexibility to determine appropriate time frames for uh, construction uh, and our need to embrace that healthcare facility master plan and our need to ensure that within a reasonable time period we're at least identifying funding sources. Ms. Gower mentioned that uh, uh, you know the, the prospect of a joint venture grant uh, with IHS as it related to the J facility. Subsection C of Section 5 talks about six months from the effective date. Uh, the Chair Connections shall identify the source, of a, the source of the appropriate funding level for the construction. It's not clear to me that the administration is, is, is that the administration would find it impossible to comply with that uh, subsection. All it's saying is that they'll identify uh, the uh, appropriate funding level. Um, it, it, I think, is a way for the Council to uh, to embrace the overall master plan and in that regard there's nothing to say that we can't uh, amend this from time to time to further embrace the other uh, the other clinics that uh, the administration have mm -hmm. identified so again I, I to me I don't see this as uh, having any kind of a limiting effect on the administration uh, I'm not persuaded that it's going to wreck the administration's uh, master plan I think in fact it enhances it so I would encourage uh, 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 my colleagues to join me in supporting it. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Councilor Fishing, huh? Yeah, this is a question maybe I need to ask you. Was it my understanding on the Chief while ago I was in the middle of coughing that he said this, did he not describe this as more or less as a reaffirmation of whatever we've already got said? Can you go back into the notes and find that? No. Okay, yeah. my other question is, and if Melissa can't answer these with a short, simple answer, don't bother, okay? Here's my question. The new medical clinic located at Tallapal, Oklahoma, the thing that we have listened to the chief ask us two or three times a day that we're going to do something with the clinic, and I know Bill John and Tynes frothing at the bit over one as well as all their constituents. What is the time frame you actually think that it will be done in? I don't want one saying 10 years, I don't want one saying 3 years, and oh, it went over. I want to know, honest and goodness, when you think a clinic will be done in California. Mm -hmm. Can you I tell me one, know. two, you do not know? Absolutely, okay. I do not know. Okay, medical clinic in Jay. Can you give Harley and Curtis a time limit? I can, t I can tell you what's on the capital improvement okay. plan. Give me that Would year, That right, we please. start beginning design in 09. 09 design. And roughly how long and that means that we will apply for a joint? Well, she said if I couldn't answer it in one or two words, no on answer. Come on, no. speaker, just for a second. Just, just answer into the mic, so because we got people watching. The Even though you can hear me from I the barn. I can hear you. <laughs> <laughs> um, guys trying to find you, know, you on the screen. For Jay Clinic, if we apply for a joint venture, which is going to bring additional services to Delaware County, okay? If we do that, that application will go in in the in Jan I think it's January or February when those go in. We will know in probably was it Chuck like April I think whether that's approved or not. If that's approved in April of 09, then we begin our planning process for that. Can I tell you when the clinic is going to be finished in Jay if we get accepted to joint venture? Absolutely not. Because I don't. Well, I, no, it won't be ten years, but I don't have all the information to tell you that. Okay, could you even say anything about the dental clinic in Salina? I can tell you the status and update on the dental clinic. The dental clinic at Salina, we just need the money to build the facility. Okay, we um, we're carving out the operational dollars out of Muskogee to fund the operational piece of that. We got shorted $7 million for Muskogee this year. Um, we're supposed to get $3 million of that for fiscal year 10, which would be starting in October of next year. So we will have operational dollars at least by the time it's built, if not before. But you're not going to give me a date on the dental clinic? I can't give okay. you a date when it's going to be finished because lots of things could happen. I mean, we've got to outline a, a construction schedule. Well, I've got to know how we're going to pay for it. We've got to identify the sources to be used to build that facility. I can't, I can't give you a date when it's going to be finished. Yeah, 
I would be erroneous to do that. I think she's answered probably to the best of her ability. Do you have another question? Yeah, I have one more. It was the, was the, no, this I did too. Have we ever identified funds that for a dental clinic at, at Salina? Several years ago, <clears throat> part of an expansion effort that was funded in Salina was for uh, part of the occupancy of that south end of that clinic was for dental. That was part of the discussion when coming here. Several years ago, when, when the south end of that building was added on, when the that financing was justified with a dental lab. Could you look up them? I'll be happy to look up them. Because I'd like to see what's in. Okay, thank you. Thank you, sir. Councilor Hoskin. Um, just along the lines of the uh, joint venture, could you kind of use, Melissa, sorry, could you kind of use the experience with Vanita and kind of draw some parallels with what you anticipate might happen in Jay and Vanita? You were successful with the joint venture grant and, and sure. things have progressed I, along. I think, and you know, again, it's, it's hard to pull these dates and times off the top of my head, but I think we applied in January. We got word in April, if I'm not mistaken, that we that we were approved for, for Vanita. Okay? Then we have until September 30th to get the land. I mean you have to buy land, you have to have an environmental clearance on the land, which we're in the process of, of completing right now for Vanita. That needs to be done by September 30th. Once that's done, then you start a, a program of requirements and program justification document with Indian Health Service, which designs the space and the staffing and formula based, all that. And that takes, I don't know, Muskogee, it took us about 18 months. So it's a pr planning process that you do all of that. That has to go all the way up to the Director of Indian Health Service for approval. In the meantime, you have to, um, you know, start trying to figure out how you're going to finance the construction. Once that's done, then you start on the preliminary conceptual design for the facility so that you can start pricing it out and getting, you know, bids on the A&E and on the construction piece of it, and then it's actually construction time. And I'm not so, needing to hold you to any dates, but the, a similar process might unfold with Yeah, you. I mean, it's, you know, it, it, once you're approved, just a best guess would be, you know, somewhere around three years. And I have a follow-up from Mr. Hembry. Thank you, Melissa. Um, Mr. Hembry, I said a while ago that I didn't see anything in the legislation that had any kind of a limiting effect on the administration. They obviously already have a, a master plan and nothing in this legislation calls, calls for them to scrap anything. I mean, for example, in subsection B of section 5, it, it, maybe it doesn't list every item that's in their master plan, but that doesn't mean that the council is, uh, is uh, ordering the administration not to pursue those other items. No, the only thing a legislative act is, 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 as you know, the law of the land, you know, and um, uh, the difference between, well, it's not, no, you, it doesn't prevent you from, from, from going after other, building other planets, doing anything else. It just requires you that you must do this because it, it, because it is an act. And this, and, and as I read subsection C of section five, it, we're just asking, the, or just the, the, the law is just gonna require that they identify sources of funding, not that we fund it in six months, not that we turn dirt in six months, that we identify sources of funding. That Am I reading that correctly? That is correct. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Councilor Jordan. I guess this is more a, a comment than a question, but from what I'm hearing Melissa say, we have identified that we're going to build these four clinics. And from listening to what she just said, she can answer already the source of funding for three of those clinics, which is what Part B is. Uh, she tells us that we have a master capital improvement plan, which has been adopted by Cherokee Nation government, so she's met C. The only thing that we haven't addressed is the IPA agreements and not opposing those. And I would ask uh, Melissa or Melanie, which um, whoever would want to answer this, do you all have any opposition 
to the wording of D, which talks about IPA agreements between the current employees that you all would not oppose their continuation as long as it as you reserve the right not to renew if there's a disciplinary or work performance reason. I think you've pretty well answered A, B, C, and D already in well, section 5. I, I believe you already answered that in the, on our okay. last item too. I think the only thing we would need well, to address is I'll be glad to answer the that. IPA. Uh, on E? It's or, actually D. Okay. Well, the only thing I that's wrong in that is it's inter-person governmental agreement, not intra. Yeah, this one. Okay. Inter. And I that's technical, but. I-N-T. I-N-T-E-R. Inter. Okay. I would ask that okay, and, my motion be and the, amended to that. And on B, you know, or whatever, A, my concern is still actually putting medical clinic in there. Because what if we do what if we uh, do the plan and it's better to build an inpatient facility? The purpose if is you, to separate. I those. would assume, though, if you build a new hospital, you're going to um, create the clinic at the old hospital through a uh, construction process. It'll have to be redone. Is that right, Melissa? Well, I'm sure there would have to be some renovation. And would that not be a new medical clinic? Well, I wouldn't consider it new if it's in an existing facility. But. Well, it's a new standalone clinic, right? I, I think you're. I think we're all saying the same thing. It, it appears to me from the comments you've made that you've covered A, B, C, and D. It, it appears you have covered A, B, C, and D. So again. <coughs> We're not limiting what our con our future health plan will be. We're just <coughs> basically reiterating what we've already talked about and putting it in written form. <coughs> I, I just do not see how anyone can oppose that we establish in writing that we're going to do these four clinics. We've got to be forward thinking here that there's a future in health and we need to be a part of establishing the plan. And that's all this is, is to establish the direction we're going to go in the future. It's not to limit a new items that might be added at a later date or that might already exist on the drawing board. It's just to make sure that these four clinics are going to be done. It's to make sure that what we've told those employees verbally is what we're agreeing to put in some sort of written fashion. I, I'm kind of at a loss to see what everyone, to see what anyone's opposition would be to a new dental clinic at Salina, a new medical clinic at Benita, a new medical clinic at Jay, and a new medical clinic here because these are things that we have publicly stated. Not only have we stated this, but admin has stated this. And that's all. Council, so. Again, I would I would like to correct that number D to be enter, I N T E R, and Chuck, I think you did the second. Yeah, I'll accept that. Right Councilor Soap, you have the floor. Yeah, I, I just uh, have a question about uh, as, as far as our capital planning um, <coughs> goes. Uh, there obviously was a plan. There's a sequence that uh, one would think that we would uh, initiate the plan. And so, um, Melissa, how does how do these specific locations, Tahlequah, J, and Benita, for medical clinics, uh, fit into the sequence of that plan? I, I would not be opposed to uh, supporting legislation that says that we would uh, initiate the construction of three uh, clinics, or uh, you know, the establishment of three. Uh, health care facilities uh, within the Cherokee Nation, but just as far as the specific locations, I feel like that limits us a little bit as far as uh, maybe pro uh, providing for the best location uh, in regards to funding or partnerships with uh, other uh, people. So uh, can you comment on that real quick? I can, and, and um, um, Councilor Slope, first, I'm, 
Um, you know, the, the capital invest improvement plan that I've seen, okay, and, and that's done by uh, management resources and um, <coughs> they're the ones that's over facilities and so they develop that with all of our, with everybody at the tribe's input into it. So it's really long. I mean, I think the whole plan is like $61 million long or something. So um, the um, health pieces that are in there, and, and I'm doing this off the top of my head, which is not good at this point. <laughs> But, um, are, you know, include, um, and this was part of our long-range plan for health, um, include um, um, J Clinic, okay, Salina Dental. Um, it also included Muskogee, No Water, and Redbird Smith, and those we finished. It includes um, Benita and... Um, um, we need something at Bartlesville because we're in a rented facility there and, you know, that process. So it includes that. It includes um, if we assume Hastings Hospital, um, it would include the development of the 45 acres or the Burchett property, what we call that's adjacent to Hastings, um, which has numerous things on it. The whole plan for the 45 acres has... Um, a retail building for doctor space, it has a daycare center, it has a Jack Brown Center, it has a medical storage facility, it has a health programs and services building, it has um, um, a health facility, a health services facility, whether that's outpatient or inpatient, we haven't determined that <laughs> yet, but I think there's altogether eight or nine buildings on that, on that um, actual site. So, um, you know, that's all long term and it's spread out in the plan over a five year period. Okay, so um, there are numerous of those that start in 09, fiscal year 10, 11, 12, and 13. Now, there's, there's a, you know, it's one thing to have a plan, it's another thing to have that plan developed and, and financing developed for all that on how you're going to implement it. Um, and um, the financing piece of it, we've not, we don't have done. Um, you know, how we built the other three facilities was through issuing um, healthcare construction public bonds. Well, my debt service for those is through third party. Um, our third party is pretty much plateaued, so it's not going to increase a lot for me to for me to debt service those out under third party billing. So I'm probably not going to be able to do that in health. So we got to think about can the tribe do a, you know, a big third party, uh, I mean a big debt issuance on behalf of all the tribe for that whole plan. You, I guess you see what I'm saying. Right. I'm just going on, I know. The but The thing that I'm interested um, in for sure is, is the site selection. Mm -hmm. Is that... Um, is there, are there any issues with being very specific about site selection at this point? It appears to me that it, it is in agreement with the existing capital plan that we're just restating uh, what is already in some plan, but I just wanted to be sure that there wasn't other potential site selections that would be eliminated by preemptively being so specific in our, in our act that we state it's going to be in Tahlequah, it's going to be in Benita, or it's going to be in Jay, whenever there may have been uh, room for flexibility in your capital improvement right. plan right. that you would expect to have some type of flexibility well, I can tell you, right. I can tell you, for, and I'll be short, I can tell you for Benita it's going to be in Benita because that's what we were approved for. Okay. okay? For Jay, you know, we haven't bought land yet. We have land that we would like to acquire for it to be in Jay. I don't know, you know, I'm not opposed to it being somewhere besides Jay as long as it serves that population there. Uh, once we apply for joint venture, then we've set the site location, but we have not actually done that. Um, for the um, facility in Tahlequah, we already own 45 acres there, and our site plan for that five, 45 acres does include all of those health facilities. Okay. And I have no intentions of, you know, looking elsewhere because we own 45 acres there. Salina Dental, um, of course, would need to be onto the current clinic, so 
I think that slide is said. Okay, one more follow-up, Mr. Chair. Is that uh, in Section C, I believe it still references uh, Section B. Have we taken care of that? or? <coughs> It actually, I'm sorry, Chris. It, we, apparently we changed the, yeah. the number and that needs to be. Would that, would that be a friendly amendment that we just change that to A? I mean, I'm just pointing it out. I'm really asking for an amendment. I would agree that that subsection B needs to be changed to subsection A. I, I agree with that. Yeah. And, then, and that's also in the following section, too. Okay, in B and C, we would change the subsection B to A in both of them. Is that right, Todd? That's correct. Okay. Is that all, Councilor yeah. Yes, thank you. Councilor Fulbright. Yes, I have several reservations and questions still lingering here in my mind. I've been on the council almost a year, and if I've ever seen a master improvement plan, I must have had an all time moment because I haven't ever seen it. And I would love to see it. And I think Councillor Soap was pointing out a point that we, as tribal councillors, don't feel like we have had any input at all in, into site selection. And uh, I know plans do change because we've been wanting a dialysis center at Salisaw for a long, long time. And Mr. Thornton told me that the land was purchased down there to do that, but then evidently the planning committee thought more people could be served by building the annex on down there. But I think we have to be very, very careful. I'm sure all these well-educated, important people who know a lot more about medicine than me thought all this out, but we have a huge multi-million dollar clinic sitting over at Muskogee that is more or less a ghost town right at the moment. People aren't utilizing it. And that was in somebody's big master plan. And I'll be so happy when a lot of people start going over there and they maybe unclog Redbird and Hastings and nobody more than me wants a, a new patient uh, clinic over here at Muskogee. I mean, it's uh, Teleport, excuse me. Because if you ever go over there and actually try to use it, it's a nightmare. Trying, you know, so it couldn't be us taking it over will be nothing but an improvement. But I really am not for this because to me it limits us. I'm not saying that it does limit us, but I want to see the master plan. And I wish that we all had a little bit of input into it because it looks like if we ever do see it, it's going to be after the fact. It's as Melissa said, it was a $61 million plan, and it's all been decided already. And I would really like to see it in the budget hearing and examine all of it. I'm sure all these things are needed here, but as Councilor Soap has asked in previous meetings, like, who, who picked out this location? You know, I'm sure there were studies done and all this. There were about to be just spent that many million dollars to build the most fabulous medical clinic anywhere over at Muskogee and you go over there and look at the parking lot and visit and we're hoping all the bugs will get worked out of the system over there and time will cure it and people will start going there but I'm not sure that the planners had the best judgment in mind and I was I want to see the plan before I vote on anything. I'll have to say. Councilor, Madam Speaker Fraley. Follow up on Chris's uh, statement. On Section 5A, those aren't listed in any order of priority, are they? I want to make sure it's lined with mm -hmm. first. No, just kidding. They are <laughs> No, they're not listed in any order of priority. No. Councilor Fishing Hawk. Budget time, I think. Uh, Melissa said it would be a great time to go over this, and I would love to be able to go over this if we're not rushed <coughs> and if we have time, because it's very interesting to me because it's health care. Not all of us choose to go on to college. Maybe we're not using the educational program all that much, but health care affects us everybody at some level, 
and I would love to be able to take some time during budget hearings to go over some of this and not be rushed, you know, without having people having appointments or calling for the question or saying you're taking too long. But then again, I'm in dedicated. That, this is my job that if, I'm dedicated. If I may, Melissa, in that vein, uh, you had mentioned at budget hearings that you may have a master plan outline. I defer to Melanie. She's actually the one that made that comment. I was just going to say that uh, Callie is planning to bring forward what's planned in the capital improvement plan for discussion, along with the discussion of how to finance it, perhaps, because uh, that is the biggest discussion we're having internally. Is we've got this wish list of needs, and uh, um, how much are we willing to borrow, and how much are we willing? Do we need to try to finance other ways? You saw the floor. Yeah, where does the council's wish list of needs go? Well, we have put uh, the council's, um, for example, the council house is on that list. Well, so there, there's various things that, um, you know, we've got input from you about that are on that list as well. So um, obviously budget time is the time to talk about that. Present over that. We'll present the. Councilman Crittenden. Thank I'll you, take Chairman. a couple more after that. We need to move on with discussion. Uh, just a reference to uh, Mr. Soap, uh, Councilman Soap's comments while ago about the order of, uh, or where these clinics were going to be as far as how they compared to the master plan, capital plan. Obviously, the sites were the same, and there's no order necessarily. I think, listening to what Melissa said about the master capital plan, I think she listed the clinic at J first in her comments, the Salina Clinic second, and uh, Benita third, and then possibly Cherokee County or Tahlequah fourth. I, I don't know if that's the order or whatever in the plan. Uh, the other question I would have would be for Melissa, wherever she went, but uh, the uh, dialysis center down in Sequoia County, I'd like to kind of know where that sits on the master plan or what when that's uh, uh, scheduled or whatever, because as Mr. Thornton said, if the land was purchased way back there, uh, obviously something's kind of happened there to slow it up. So uh, I would be concerned about that. I'll so. address that. Melissa took a phone call real quickly, but right. um, we do try to get third parties to leverage as much of those kinds of facilities as possible. And what we've been trying to do is get a third party to cite the the dialysis center there and fund it so that the nation doesn't have to. And um, I think Gloria can give a short briefing on what the status of that is. Yeah, well, I'll have Rachel talk about it. She's been working with Davida. Does everybody know Rachel? She's our, she does our uh, Hi, I'm Rachel development. Um, the update on dialysis is that We've had several companies come in and want to have an interest in it, but for their interest, they have to have a patient mix that weighs their financial gain. And so when it gets to that point, then that's where things get a little bit iffy for them. So everybody we've talked to has run into that. However, DeVita has expressed a great interest in it, and they're still working on their plan to propose a business plan for um, CNB to approve. So it's in the making. It's just taking some time to get those patient numbers. And I've been communicating with Janelle about that. She's been real helpful to help me get information that we need. And actually, I have a call with Davida as soon as this meeting's over to discuss it. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Council Thornton will take one more question after that. Uh, <clears throat> on the situation of the dialysis center <clears throat> and the annex that was added on, that annex in reality was first passed through this council and it was piggy-tailed in on the budget for 2000. And it was piggy-tailed in there for the dialysis center and for the annex to be added on and put the dialysis center in the annex. Somehow we ended up adding on the annex and the people out of the <coughs> Redbird Clinic moved over into it and there wasn't any dialysis center. But my question is, is the annex large enough to put a dialysis center in it yeah. at present time? Yeah. It's since, since we moved all these offices out of one building into another. The, the problem is it's not set up 
for a dialysis center in the sense that it doesn't have the right plumbing, the right water source, doesn't have, and, and plus there's not enough space. I mean, we're already outgrowing our existing space. But even aside from that, if you tried to make room, it doesn't, it's not constructed the way that it would need to be constructed. Is the building constructed to where it can be added on to? That I don't. I'm, sh I'm, sh I'm, I'm sure it is. We, we usually try to build all of our facilities where they can be added on to. It's a nice rectangle, so. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, I don't really have a problem with, with this ad because at the time I had the annex, we did the annex without doing the Bonita office or doing the J clinic or doing the other things that were needed at that time. But also at Redbird, we, we need that dialysis center down the country. At that time, we had quite a bit going on. And I don't know what the uh, percentages are about uh, who has diabetes and who needs a dialysis. I know that every day someone's telling me that they're going on dialysis. I need an operation. I've got to put a tube in my arm so I can keep going dialysis. And in the meantime, since that time, I've, I've got diabetes. And, and I realize that someday I may have to have a dialysis uh, program to go to. But I can't be against this because this is for people. And <clears throat> I just keep it against it. Thank you. Last question. Well, David, what if we added the dialysis center in here? As an additional uh, I don't, yeah. Hey, it's on the grand plan. I don't think it'd make any difference. Because I think this plan that they're going to come up with will probably have them all there. We've got six months, and we're going to go over it before the next two months. And I don't think it'll make any difference. You know, I'm I'm for it. I don't, you know, anything's going to help a family improve their life and their quality of life. That's well, if you want it in there, I will. Yeah. I will amend my motion. I don't. Uh, I think it's already in the plan. I don't, you know, if they're telling me it's in the plan, it's in the plan. That's what I would say. I'm sorry. Okay. Um, call for the question. We have a call for question. We also have the second. All those in favor of passing item number three as amended, say so by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. aye. Roll call. Jack Baker? Yes. Harley Buzzard? Yes. Julia Coates? No. Bradley Cobb? No. Joe Crittenden? Yes. Jody Fishinghawk? Yes. Meredith Braley? Yes. Janelle Fulbright? Yes. Don Garvin? No. Chuck Hoskin Jr.? Yes. Tyna Glory Jordan? Yes. Curtis Snell? No. Chris Soap? Yes. David Thornton? Yes. Kara Callan Watt? No. Bill Anglin? No. <coughs> Ten yay and six nay. The motion carries. Uh, next on the agenda is announcements. Are there any announcements? I have one. I uh, want to thank everybody. If you'd hold still for a minute, I would appreciate it. I want to thank everybody for their indulgence. Um, when I first got on the council, I come from private practice optometry. I am neck deep in capitalism. And one of my concerns was with politics and government that it didn't go fast enough and I have found that there are times now that there's a reason for that. Um, I know there are some people on the council and some people that I highly respect that are not on the council that wanted this process regarding Hastings to go faster and some wanted it to go slower. At the risk of um, 
sounding too quiet. Um, I, uh, with the exception of possibly one person, and if I'm wrong, I apologize, I'm the only person in this room that has practiced as a doctor in a federal facility. And there have been times when there's been some legal issues, there's been some times when there's been some road issues. That's not my expertise, and quite honestly, I've leaned on some other people. But I do have experience as a doctor in a federal facility. And that being said, I believe we are elected primarily to make law, but we are elected as a voice of the people of the Cherokee Nation. And there were people on this council that had questions, and irregardless of whether some people felt like there was too much time taken, I felt like those people needed those questions answered, and I would do exactly the same thing I, d I did this last, since January, I did the same thing again. So I just wanted to put that forth. We are, when I feel like ample time has been given for everybody to get their questions answered and vote according to how the people that they were elected to represent feel and think, then we'll vote. And uh, hopefully that's what I've done. And, and I'm a big believer in not cutting discussion off, as most people have kind of found out. So I appreciate your indulgence, and I hope that on the way out you do thank the staff for the last eight or nine months, because they have been here late several times. Are there any more announcements? I would entertain a motion to adjourn. Yeah. Motion to adjourn. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed?